Hello everybody. I was asked if I would share the way that I have been taking soap notes with everyone. So I decided to make a video to show everyone this really cool way that I started using to make my soap notes at the clinic where I work. So currently I'm a supervisor at a pediatric clinic and this has become one of the best ways in my opinion that I've ever taken soap notes before. It's really awesome. It helps the students to be really concise. It's color coded. So that's a side note. If you ever have a client or a student who is colorblind, you would probably have to alter the colors. We have not had that yet. So right now this works for us really well, but do keep that in mind. So the way that I've been taking soap notes is in this form in an Excel document. And the reason why I've been doing that is because at the end of the semester, it gives everybody this really great visualization of how the client did because you can make charts and graphs, which is really awesome. So what I've done here is just put out a basic template. So you'll see this is just a blank sheet. And this is the template that every single client we have will have in the very beginning before anything is put in. So you just put the child's name in here. I've just inserted my cat's name. And then the student that I'm working with, you put their name here, again, my other cat. And then my name as their supervisor, I will put in right here. You will see that there is a legend here and we will get to that as to why we have that and how that works. So the next step is then to go in and put in the client's goals. So one of the great things about doing Excel documents instead of Word, which is what we had been doing before, is that all of the goals are at the top of the page. So I'm gonna leave this one blank and for now we're gonna switch over. So we're gonna go right down here to this other tab where this one has already been partially filled in. So you'll see this is the child's goal and this particular kid has four goals right now. It's a kid that we used to have. It's actually not a kid we see anymore. And all the names have been taken out for, um, obviously for protection of the child's identity and all those sorts of things. Anyway, so the goals will go here. And then you always have those goals available to you throughout the entire semester. So you have to never have to go digging for them. You never have to figure out what they are. They're just right here at the top of the document all the time. The first step that you'll do is you'll type in the date that the child attended the session or adult if you're using this for adults. Then you go to the next spot, type in your subjective and just basically you know, your basic subjective. There's nothing different here. In the objective portion, here's where it gets a little bit different from how you might have seen goals before. In this part, we only type in the type of queuing that was done. So what was the level of queuing? So for goal number one, they did it at word level with minimal visual queuing. So this particular kid's goal one, uh, right now the goal is set that we want the child to be able to do it given a static visual, so a visual cue, right? So also for this one, goal two, they did it at the word level with static visual and then goal three, action and sentences. So at the sentence level and goal four, they did it at the word level with a static visual as well. Over here is where you're going to type in the percentages. So how the child actually performs. So this is all still the objective section as well. The reason why it's broken down is so that you can make those really great charts that we were talking about. The numbers are going to let you know this is the percent in the opportunities that the child was able to perform. And then the colors, here is the legend. So if the child is performing at the goal level, so for this particular child, the goal is written with minimal visual. They did it at minimal visual, so it gets put in green because the child did it at the minimal visual cue level. If the child needed more support than how the goal is written, you shaded in red. So here for goal number four, it was at the word level with static visual, which is actually more support than what the goal is written at. So we put it in red. If the child actually performs above where we would, where we've written the goal, then you're going to put it in yellow. So that way you can quickly look down and say, oh look, this child has gone 89%, 73, so that's below the goal in percentages, but at the goal level as far as support is. Here is the same. So we can look and say, we have multiple weeks in a row where they're at the goal level with the type of support, but their percentage is still below what we are the, our target. So they haven't met the goal just yet. However, if you look at goal number three, 
you can see here it's been written that the goal has been met. And if we go back and look in green, we have three weeks in a row, which is how the goal was written, that the client would do it in three consecutive weeks. So this would look different if you did three out of four sessions, if you do two data collection sessions, it depends on how your goal is written. But you can look quickly and see 93%, 92, 100, three consecutive weeks, this goal has been met. So this goal would be discontinued and replaced with something new. So here is where it looks a little bit different than how other SOAP notes might be written. So again, this is just your level of queuing. These are your numbers, and then the colors let you know what level of support. So is it at the goal level, below the goal level, or above the goal level? This assessment portion, again, is exactly the same as an assessment as you would do anywhere else. So just talking about was the subjective, what we normally see, and then kind of assessing the objective. What really makes this particular system great is that when you go in to write, let's say, three or four or 13 weeks later, you can easily go back and look and say, okay, I can see here that they were at 73 last week, they're at 82 this week, we have an increase, and we mentioned that over here in the assessment. And easily look at the differences because it's directly above. Also, with it being color-coded, you can also say, so for example, if one week gets in red, the next week gets in green, we can easily talk in the assessment that maybe the percentage went down substantially, but the child is performing at the goal level, so they didn't need as much support. So that makes the assessment portion really great. The plan portion is the exact same as how any other plan would be, so nothing unusual there. And then in our clinic, the supervisor has to sign off in it. So I've just put my initials here so you can see how we do it. And I just sign off when I have said that this is okay for the student to go ahead and this, this particular soap note is finished. What I will do with my students if I need to give them feedback, a lot of times, and we have this discussion ahead of time, either I will put my notes in all caps to catch their attention, I'm not yelling at them, or I will highlight my portion or I'll just tell them verbally. So there's lots of different ways that you can address having the student fix the, any mistakes or anything they might have left out for teaching purposes if you're a supervisor. Now the way to make graphs in Excel is really awesome. You just click on the data point here, and then all you have to do is scroll down to the very last data point that you want. You're gonna hold the Shift key down and click there. Now it's highlighted everything here. I'm gonna go up here, up to my top here, up this portion at the top, and I'm gonna push insert. When you click on insert, you will go over here and you will see that there are a bunch of options for different types of charts or graphs that you can use. I use this line graph right here. It's just very basic, very straightforward. It's the one that I prefer to use. So all you will do is just click on it and you will see that it has now generated a nice line graph to show you how the child has performed for those particular weeks. So it's great that we have a chart here, but you can't just leave it this way. The chart has to be labeled. So the first thing you can do is just click on the title. You can just highlight, delete, and type goal number one. You also wanna make sure that you're putting in what goal number one is. So oftentimes what I do is I will just go to the top here and I will copy a part of the goal. So just highlight, copy and paste. So Command C if you're working on a Mac. Click back down here, Command V also if you're working on a Mac to paste it so that we know what this particular goal is. So it's not just goal number one, but it's what the goal is exactly. Again, we have a little bit more labeling that we need to do. So you go back up here to the top where the tabs are, and you're going to click on Chart Design. When you click on Chart Design, you'll go all the way to the far left to Add Chart Elements. Click the down arrow, and we need to add axis titles. So we will add a horizontal and a vertical title. The horizontal title, I label Weeks because in our clinic we go by Weeks so that the family knows that this is over the course of four weeks. And this is just an example. It would be a lot more weeks when we gave these out. We'll go up to add chart elements again, axis title, do a vertical, and then I will do whatever the goal was as far as, are we doing this in a percent of opportunities? 
whatever the however the goal is written. So this was in percent of opportunities achieved because this is the, what, how the child performed or however you want to word that, whatever makes the most sense to you. But now we have a chart that we can insert either into, oh, I apologize, undo what I just did. <laughs> we can insert this into a progress report. We can just keep it here in our particular, in the Excel document. You can put it off to the side, which is often what we do is we just put our charts over here on the side so we have them. And we usually only make the charts at the end of the semester. So we'd have a full semester's worth of work on here. But I make these and it's really great visual representation for the families so that they know how the child has been performing. Okay, so let's say you don't want to do all of the elements because you only want to do the data points where the child was performing at the level that we have the goal written. So let's say in the middle there's a goal here and here the child maybe had an off week and needed lots of extra support. You can still go in and you can take the data points. So you just click on this one. Instead of pushing shift, this time you would push the command key and it will just highlight the ones that you want. So see how it did not highlight this one. Hold the command key again and click on this data point. And again, this particular one is not included. So we're only adding those to the chart where the child has been performing at the goal level, if that's what you want. You do want to be cautious that you're not putting in above goal level, below goal level, and at goal level in the same chart because that would be a misleading chart. So you want to make sure that whatever chart you're making, you're very clear what the goal level was. So sometimes even in my title of my chart, I will write what the goal was, the goal like prompting hierarchy was so that it's very clear what this particular chart is for. So I'll run through this one more time. So I've clicked on the data points that I want. So I'll go to insert, align chart, click here, and you'll see the steady progress that has gone up for this child. So again, I will write goal number two. For this child, goal number two was produce all sounds at the CVC word level. We will just insert that here. Then we will go to chart design, chart elements, horizontal. We'll type, whoops, we will type weeks. Make sure you highlight it so it doesn't just type weeks axis that what I just did. Then we will go to vertical. And then we will type production in percentages or however, whatever you want to write. So I'm really glad that we did this one as well because you'll notice that it doesn't go up to 100%. If you want it to go to 100%, you definitely can fix this if you want to show that the cap would be 100. All you have to do is highlight and then you can change this particular type. So we can do select the data and then we can change how we're doing this. I apologize, that's not the right thing. We will go to format. So we're gonna format, and we want the max to be 100. So that's all I did, format, the max to be 100. We're gonna enter that, and now you'll see that the chart changed. So let me show you again since I made a mistake. All you will do is you will click on the data. You'll see that a box comes around it. Right click, format the axis, maximum. We're gonna change that to 100 and push enter. And now we have another chart. So again, can go over here and we have our charts. Then every semester, the kid gets a new tab. So this particular kid would have a new tab that would say summer 2021 and then fall 2021, so forth and so on. And what we can do is any goals that are being carried over from semester to semester can just be copied. So just highlight 
the data that you need. Command C, go over to sheet number two, command V, and now we have all of the goals in this, in this uh, sheet as well. So then the student has a fresh sheet to start with. All right, hopefully that it gives you another way to do soap notes. Again, I really like this way. I think it makes a lot of sense. It, it helps with my data-driven brain and it allows us to have these really beautiful charts. If you have any questions or any suggestions on how to improve on it, please let me know.